Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Let's be real, building a good, dynamic website from scratch that can take days, sometimes even weeks of planning, coding, and wanting to throw your computer out the window. But what if it didn't have to? What if you could take that whole process and shrink it down to the length of a lunch break? In this tutorial, I'll show you how I built a modern, fully functional movie website using HTML, Tailwind CSS, JavaScript, and the TMDB API, all with the help of ChatGPT. You'll see the entire thing, every line of code and the AI's step-by-step -step guide to building your own movie website. We're going from a blank folder to a feature-rich movie discovery platform with search, genre filters, and even dark mode. And if you're new, please subscribe. It really helps me grow, keeps me motivated to bring you more high-quality content. I started with this one super detailed prompt, ChatGPT, become my full-time coding mentor. I want to learn how to code a movie website. I want to build a movie app using HTML, Tailwind, JavaScript, and will be connecting to the moviedb.org for their API. I want the website to have these features, movie search, popular slash trending movies, movie details page, genres filter, dark mode, and a load more pagination. Give me step-by-step -step to accomplish this. And what ChatGPT came back with was, honestly, incredible. It didn't just dump a wall of code on me. It laid out a complete roadmap. It broke the project into logical steps. First, get the API key. Second, set up the basic HTML. Third, implement the core feature of fetching and displaying popular movies. And then, it showed how to layer on the other features like search, filters, and dark mode, one by one. The tools for this are super accessible. Plain HTML for structure, Tailwind CSS for styling with a CDN link, and vanilla JavaScript for all the logic. No complicated frameworks needed. Following the AI's plan, the setup was super minimal. I made a new folder, and inside, just four files, index.html, movies.html, styles.css, and script.js. That's literally it. For styling, we're using Tailwind CSS through a CDN, which just means adding a single script tag to our HTML. This lets us skip any complicated setup and get right into the fun part. I had ChatGPT generate the basic HTML layout. It gave me a complete structure with aid header for the title and dark mode toggle, aid main section with a search bar, a spot for genre filter buttons, an empty grid for movie posters, and a load more button. I just copied and pasted it right into my index.html file. It was a perfect, clean starting point. All right, now for the main event, actually getting movies to show up on the screen. This is the heart of the app, and I was most curious to see how the AI would handle it. The plan was to start by fetching the most popular movies from TMDB. ChatGPT told me to use the slash movie slash popular endpoint. It provided an async function in JavaScript that uses the fetch API to make the request. The function sends our API key and then waits for the response. Once the data comes back, it's in a JSON format with a results array. Each item in that array is a movie with all the details we need, like title, rating, and poster path. And here's a key detail that ChatGPT made sure to highlight. The poster underscore path you get from the API isn't a full URL. You have to tack it onto TMDB's base image URL to get it to work. The AI then gave me a function to loop through this results array. For each movie, it builds the HTML for a movie card, an image for the poster, a title, and a rating, and drops it right into our movie grid. Now it was time to get our API key. I already had a TMDB account so all I had to do was log in my account and get the key, but for those who don't, you just need to register at https colon slash slash it's quick and free. Once registered, go to your profile icon. Click on Settings API. Apply for a developer key. You'll get a v3 API key. Copy this because we'll use it in our JavaScript.
You can see it is clearly written. API key, select and copy it properly and do not leave anything out. I then pasted it in my script.js file where the API key is required. And boom, just like that, our website is looking good and like I said before, for each movie, it builds the HTML for a movie card, an image for the poster and title, and drops it right into our movie grid. I've gotta say, seeing that grid suddenly fill up with real movie posters for the first time, it was genuinely magical. The dark mode is a small touch, but it's one of those things that just makes a site feel modern and professional. The logic it gave me was so clean and simple. Tailwind handles dark mode by looking for a dark class on the main HTML element. So, the JavaScript just needs to do two things. First, listen for a click on the toggle button to add or remove that dark class. Now that we've successfully implemented features like fetching popular movies in dark mode and the load more button, ChatGPT told me we can move on. And the next step is to add the movie details page. This is the page a user lands on when they click on a specific movie. It should show more information about that movie, like the overview, release date, rating, and a larger poster image. And of course, we want this page to also follow the same clean design, styled with Tailwind CSS. So, I went ahead and asked ChatGPT for the HTML structure of a movie detail page that includes embedded JavaScript to fetch the details dynamically from the TMDB API, based on the movie ID in the URL. ChatGPT gave me the entire code, the HTML layout, Tailwind styles, and the JavaScript, all in one file. I went to the movie.html in the root of my project folder, and I pasted all of that code right inside. Now a quick note here. The JavaScript in this file is internal, meaning it's written directly inside aid script tag at the bottom of the HTML file. This makes it easier to get things working fast without breaking the functionality. Later on in the video, we'll refactor this. I'll move the logic into a separate movie.js file to keep things clean and maintainable, just like we did in our main site. But for now, let's keep it simple so we can test and see everything in action. With this in place, we now have a dedicated page for every movie. So when someone clicks on a movie card, it redirects them to this page and pass the movie's ID as a query parameter in the URL. All right, now let's move on to one of the most important features of any movie website, the search functionality. This is where users can type the name of a movie, and we instantly fetch results from the TMDB API and display them on the page. So here's how it went. I told ChatGPT I wanted to add a search feature where users could type in a movie name and see matching results. As always, ChatGPT delivered, it gave me a full breakdown of what I needed. First, it suggested I add an input field to my HTML. That's the search bar where users would type. Then it gave me the JavaScript logic to listen for a key press or form submission, grab the user's input, and make a request to the TMDB API's search endpoint. So when someone types, let's say Batman, the app hits that URL with Batman as the query, and TMDB returns a list of movies that match that keyword. The JavaScript had an event listener to that input. So whenever the user presses enter, it triggers the search. ChatGPT also gave me the fetch movies by search function. This made the search feel super responsive. I could search for any movie and get real-time results rendered on the page, just like on Netflix or IMDb. And of course, to keep everything clean and consistent, we reused the same display movies function to render the search results. That way, whether it's trending movies or search results, the layout always looks uniform. Just like that, search was working beautifully and I didn't write this from scratch. I used ChatGPT to help guide every step, from the HTML to the JavaScript. Now that the search feature was up and running, the next feature I wanted to add was genre filtering, so users could browse movies by category, like action, comedy, drama, sci-fi, and so on. TMDB provides a special endpoint where you can get the list of all available genres, each one with a unique ID and a name. Once we had the list of genres, ChatGPT gave me a loop that went through each genre and created a Tailwind-styled button dynamically. This created a beautiful row of filter buttons on the home page. When users clicked one, it would call the Fetch Movies by Genre function and pass in the selected genre ID. Inside that function, we use the TMDB Discover endpoint, which lets us fetch movies based on genre. This means when someone clicks action, 
The app sends a request to TMDB asking for all movies in the action genre, and we display the results on the page using the same display movies function. And just like that, genre filtering was live. Users could now browse movies by type with one click, and the entire thing was powered by dynamic data from the TMDB API. It was super clean, super fast, and I built it all with the help of ChatGPT guiding me through each step, from fetching genres, to creating buttons, to filtering results. At this point in the project, the main features, like displaying popular movies, search, and genre filtering, were already working beautifully. But then, as I was wrapping up that section, ChatGPT gave me a really thoughtful suggestion. It said, we could add a loading spinner to improve the user experience while data is being fetched from the API. Now, let me be clear here, this was totally optional. Our app was working just fine without it, but for tutorial purposes, and to show you how easy it is to improve UX even further, I decided to go ahead and implement it. First, it told me to add a simple loading spinner to the HTML, usually hidden by default. This spinner appears as a semi-transparent overlay with a spinning circle in the center, built entirely using Tailwind CSS classes. No extra libraries needed. Then, in JavaScript, it suggested two simple helper functions, show loading and hide loading. Finally, I updated each function that fetches movies, like fetch trending movies, fetch movies by genre, and fetch movies by search, and wrap the fetch call inside show loading and hide loading. Again, I want to emphasize, this step is totally optional. If you're just building this for fun or learning purposes, you can skip the spinner entirely. But if you're going for that polished, professional touch, or you want to simulate how real-world apps improve the user experience, it's a great idea to include it. That's one of the cool things about using ChatGPT as your coding mentor. Not only does it help you build your core features, it also drops in little extras that take your work to the next level. So in my Fetch Movies by Search function, I wrap the API logic in a try, catch, finally block. Now, when a user presses enter to search for something like Spider-Man, the spinner appears instantly, letting them know their request is being processed, and then disappears once the results show up. For the genre filtering, I updated fetch movies by genre function the same way, wrapping it in show loading and hide loading. I decided to test how the homepage would behave when a user visits the site for the first time. I saved my work, opened the browser, and boom, the page was completely empty. No trending movies, no popular results, just a blank page. I thought, hmm, that's strange. Everything works when I search or click on a genre. Even the load more button fetches and displays results correctly. So what's going on when the page first loads? So I paused for a second and said, let me ask ChatGPT what's missing here. So I went back to ChatGPT and explained the situation. And it immediately pointed out what was wrong. It seems like the function that fetches and displays movies isn't being triggered on page load. And yep, it was right. I had created a function called load initial movies, which was responsible for fetching and displaying the first batch of trending or popular movies using the API. But the mistake, I hadn't actually called that function. So the browser would load all the HTML and styling, but since I never told JavaScript to fetch anything right away, the movie section remained empty. And just like that, problem solved. The homepage now shows movies instantly on load, just like any professional movie website would. Know this, JavaScript won't run it on its own. If you want something to happen as soon as the site loads, you either need to call the function directly or wrap it in an event listener like window.onload or DOM content loaded. Now that our app was working just fine, I decided to follow standard development best practices and clean up our project structure. So first, I focused on the movie.html file. If you noticed earlier, we had some JavaScript written directly inside the HTML file, just before the closing slash body tag. That's okay for quick prototyping, but for maintainability and scalability, especially as your project grows, it's much better to separate your HTML, CSS, and JavaScript into different files. So here's what I did. I created a new folder called JS Write in the root of our project. Inside that folder, 
I created a new file called movie.js. Then I cut the entire internal script that was originally embedded inside movie.html, and I pasted it into the movie.js file. After that, I went back to movie.html, deleted the script tag that contained the internal JavaScript, and instead linked the new external script. I also had a script.js file, the main logic for the homepage, and I moved that as well into the JS folder, just to keep things consistent and organized. Now at this point, I noticed that both script.js and movie.js were using the same API key and base URLs, which meant we were repeating ourselves, and that's something we try to avoid as developers. So, to make our code cleaner and more reusable, I created a new file inside the same JS folder and named it config.js. Inside that file, I defined all the shared configuration constants. Then I went back into both script.js and movie.js, and I deleted the API key and base URL declarations from those files, since they were now being imported from config.js. To make sure everything still worked, I made sure to load the config.js file first in both index.html and movie.html, just before loading their corresponding script files. This way, all the shared configuration is available before the scripts run. Finally, it's important to mention that while this works fine for front-end development and tutorials like this, in a real-world production environment, it's never safe to expose your API key on the client side. Instead, you'd want to create a back-end server using something like Node.js, PHP, or Python. The server would store your API key securely, and the front-end would make requests to your server, which in turn communicates with the TMDB API. That way, your keys remain hidden from the public. I saved all the files and opened the site in the browser again to test everything. The homepage loaded perfectly. Popular movies appeared, genre filtering worked, dark mode toggled smoothly, and the search functionality still responded correctly. Then I clicked on one of the movie cards. And boom, the movie details page loaded flawlessly. All the details like the poster, title, overview, genres, and rating showed up just as expected. So everything was working exactly as before. But now, the project is far more maintainable, modular, and easier to scale. It's a small change that makes a huge difference in the long run, especially if you're planning to add more features or collaborate with other developers. If you found this helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more tutorials like this, where I build useful apps with clean code and good practices, then please consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps me grow and keeps me motivated to bring you more high-quality content.